Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. We're going to be looking at multiplying decimal numbers. My objective says I can represent multiplication of decimal numbers with an area model. I love area models because it helps break down the computation into smaller pieces that are much more manageable. Show 8 and 3 tenths times 6 and 2 tenths using an area model. Notice on the right I still have an observation that I brought from my previous video. The observation says, I noticed that when I multiplied two numbers less than one together, I got a product that is even smaller than either of the two factors. So I wanted to hold on to that observation because I think I will encounter that since I have two numbers that have decimal parts, three tenths and two tenths. All right, so um, eight and three tenths times six and two tenths, another way of saying that is eight and three tenths groups of six and two tenths. Before I get started with the exact computation, it's really important that I get a um, an estimation in my mind so that when I go to uh, tally my final result, I can look at it and determine if it is reasonable. So eight and three tenths is about eight and six and two tenths is about six. So when I multiply eight and six together, I'm gonna have a product that's gonna be close to 48. It's actually gonna be more than 48 because it's a little more than eight times a little more than six. So I'm gonna guess the product will probably be around 50, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm gonna create an area model. Each of my numbers has two parts, a ones place and a tenths place. So I'm gonna have a two by two rectangle for my area model. And I can write the numbers in any order that I want to as long as I account for the decimal place. So I'm gonna choose on the left to write eight and three tenths. And then on the top, I'm gonna to write six and two tenths. Now with an area model, we just go and find the area of each of the rectangles that makes up our larger shape. So I'm gonna start right up here in the upper left-hand corner. And I have three tenths groups of six. So I have a number less than one being multiplied by six. So if it was one times six, I know my product would be six. But it's a number less than one. I want a group that's smaller than one of six. So my product has to be less than six. Well, I know that three times six is 18, but 18 does not make sense as my product. But one and eight tenths would make sense. Okay, I'm gonna move on to this rectangle below it. And I have eight groups of six. Well, I know that eight times six is 48. I'm gonna move over here where I will have three tenths groups of two tenths. And this is where my observation comes in handy. So I notice that when I multiply two numbers less than one, like three tenths and two tenths, I'm going to get a product that's smaller than either one of these. So when I go ahead and multiply these, and I think to myself, okay, three times two is six, then a product of six doesn't make sense because that's bigger than both. And a product of six tenths doesn't make sense either because six tenths is greater than both three tenths and two tenths. So I'm going to consider that it was prob it's probably six hundredths. And I do learn when I think more about decimal operations and I do more of these, I learn that this is in fact going to be six hundredths because I have two di digits after the decimal in my factors. Okay, lastly, I have eight groups of two tenths. So I'm gonna have eight times two tenths, or two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, 12 tenths, 14 tenths, 16 tenths. So 16 tenths is the same thing as one and six tenths. Now with an area model, I could write down all four of these products and add them together, but I can also do a little mental math before I add them together, so I have less to write down. So I'm gonna to add together one and eight tenths plus six hundredths. So I'll have a one in the ones place, an eight in the tenths place, and six in the hundredths place. So that's gonna be one and 86 hundredths. With 48 and one and six tenths, I can easily add those into my head and I have 49 and six tenths. I went ahead and added those together and you can see my product is 51 and 46 hundredths. I estimated that the product would be about 48, but I knew it would be a little more than 48 because I was multiplying a little more than eight times a little more than six. So my actual product of eight and three tenths times six and two tenths is 51 and 46 hundredths. Thanks for watching.